take my pageant uh, to Ben because it has no strap buttons. Uh, this one, as he says, was born without a belly button. Uh, realistically, I decided I wanted to buy this guitar, take this guitar with me before he was actually done with it 100%. Um, we, I came over and filmed the video and I just thought, oh my gosh, I have to take this guitar with me. So he let me take it with me, with me but these couple things. I also have to take this J45 back to the owner, um, to my friend Cameron. So we're going to pack up and then I also have to go to Huston Dalton. So today's just kind of a hangout video, um, just kind of a vloggy, go see some friends. And uh, I have three guitars going three places, all in... Uh, in the next town over in Stanton, Virginia. So, all right, let's pack up. Let's get out of here. Song. <laughs> it's a very classic, all those sevens and diminished things and... Yeah, which I never did before. But again, that's the kind of thing you, you would... I couldn't play in a band. Yeah. <laughs> just, this is easier for me to play, I think. It's yeah, so a wider neck for sure. I was also playing... <laughs> took a fiddle. Also played a, little, a lot of old timey going on at the same time. Okay, that's what I remember. I remember you. We were at some bluegrass jam. It's you and um, Two Gun Terry. Yes. That's like one of the first times I remember ever playing an instrument. Is that right? Somebody had an upright bass. Yeah. And I pulled a bar stool over. Yeah. And I climbed up on the bar. Uh, and but I remember that was yeah like I was seven or eight. Really? And it started okay, yeah. to kind of think like I I like this I. Because I think I just like being around acoustic instruments. That's another thing too. It, it's very, it's very social in that respect. And going to, you know, going to uh, music festivals and so forth. I know. I just went to Red Wing. Our kids are still a little too young to do. Yeah, that. But, yeah. Know, that thing has grown. It, giant. They sold out. So they <laughs> I, sold out sixty-five hundred people. Again. Yeah. You, yeah. I remember um, when that started, it was just a very local... I know, yeah, it's a, it's a couple guys, actually, one of them I'm going to go see here in a minute, which is Brian Dickel, who played bass in the Steel Wheels. He oh, just really? bought out Jeff Huss's half of Huss and Dalton. Oh, yeah, that's so, right, I read about that. Yeah, so he's, I mean, he is an amazing, I mean, he's, he's an amazing guitar builder. Steel Wheels was a, originally a Mennonite, I mean, you... I think so. Oriented, yeah. I think so, yeah. Well, the main thing I liked about probably the main thing I liked about playing music is the singing harmony. Mm -hmm. So then I got with a group that where I could sing lead sometimes and harmony sometimes. Yeah, let me. Yeah, that's the way that that's the way that worked. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Sure. So good to see you. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be back down in a couple weeks. Okay. Okay. No hurry. Let's run over and uh, catch up with Ben Paget. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you? I found Ben at a gas station. <laughs> um, so I, I mentioned this earlier as I was loading up. Let me grab the guitar. So I, uh, my guitar, as Ben says, was born without belly buttons. Without a belly button? Plural? There's no plural. We don't have two belly buttons. But uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna give this back to him so that he can fix the uh, 
So are you going to um, just put a strap button on the back? Or could you do a... I could do one on the heel too. Yeah. If you want. Well, yeah, do one on the... Do two. And then... So one on the bow and then one on the heel of the back. Yeah. Awesome, Definitely. Man. Cool. Can I put it in yeah. here? Where do you want? Go for it. Yeah, sure. The next batch currently and... Um, I've got, I'm just got, just about got three of them boxed up, and then I just on to working on next. But cool. and that's the what two L double O's? Two L double O's and one Model One. Awesome. Yeah. Dude, I could not be happier with this thing. Like light, bigger neck. It's not a big neck. Yeah. But it's like just everything about it. I just yeah love and uh, yeah. So, also, there is another one for sale, which you should buy. It is so cool. <laughs> it's on my website. So, yeah, if you're interested in uh, being, I always want to make the joke Eskimo Brothers. Eskimo Brothers. But if anyone <laughs> knows what that means, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good thing. No. I don't know. But anyway, so there's another pageant model one. It's Coco Bolo. And it's actually what I love. There is this connection because it's, right, it's the Coco Bolo in the rosette. Is, is from the, that guitar, yeah. How yeah, cool the, is that? the back and side sets from that, the back set was like extremely long. Okay. So when I cut it down the side, I had like size, I had like a bunch of extra scraps. So. Awesome. Yeah. Dude, it's so cool. And I've noticed as the finish is getting a little older as well, as it's yellowing, all there's it's a little darker. Like the blue isn't as blue. It's almost yeah. a little green. Oh, okay. Um, but it's very cool. It's like, darkening up some. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm kind of curious to see how that top will age too. I yeah. just got, um, I won't be using them for like the next couple of guitars, but I've got um, some Torrified Sitka right oh, now cool. that I'm going to be working with in the next okay. few months. So I'm pretty excited to see about that. It already looks like, it already looks like, um, like cedar or something. Yeah. Cool. So. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm headed off to Hudson Dalton. Sounds good. Check out I'm going to go to Lowe's. <laughs> Living the dream, man. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what I was playing. This guitar was built like maybe three quarters of a mile over here. And right behind me, this is the Statler Brothers Memorial, or it's a monument here in town. It's really cool. It's right in the middle of Stanton. Would you, if you've never been to Stanton, which I guess the overwhelming majority of us have not been to Stanton, um, it is a beautiful, really cool old town. Uh, behind me is what's called the Wharf. It's an old train depot. And now it's just kind of this thriving, buzzing downtown area. Uh, I couldn't help but kind of stop and want to play guitar here for a minute. This guitar, like I said, was made about a mile from here by Huss and Dalton, Jeff Huss, Mark Dalton, um, and Jeff Huss is on the way out uh, of Huss and Dalton. Brian Dickel is coming in. I've had other videos about that. Uh, but this is, uh, I bought this guitar a year ago for $2,000 from a guy from Virginia Beach. And uh, so it's had this long circuitous route back to me and I love it. I want to keep this guitar forever and ever because it is, it's the right guitar for me in a bunch of ways, but uh, there are, one of the complications is how do I adjust the truss rod because there's a shoulder brace in here, um, but I really like this guitar and just wanted to stop and play for a minute. Feel it. 
just a little more like a quick pass. It doesn't. What do you mean a whiplash? Well, you know, what we always call a whiplash when they fall over okay. um, forward and the, the weight of the got fingers it. make it. Yeah, I got this one used about a year ago, and the guy had owned it for 10 years and said it was there the whole time he had it. So once he saw that this was just a finished crack, no structural damage, he took this razor blade, and this was amazing to watch. So he's taking the X-Acto knife, and he's cutting into the finish itself. Then he's able to dip a little bit of super glue onto that razor blade. It will then go underneath the finish and spread out underneath, causing it to fill in and change the color back to the proper color of that kind of dark mahogany. Now, he scraped this for a little bit, and then he took out some sandpaper. It's amazing to watch him do this. You can tell that this is just a master guitar builder, and he's done this forever. So he sands it down. He gets it to where it's just uh, kind of a satin finish, and then he says, hey, I'll be right back. All right. I turned around. There's this amazing slot head. That's 12 fret. That might be a 14. And then this is a Pilgrim on the left, and I think the other is a CM. So the Pilgrim is their large sound hole, just amazing bluegrass guitar. Now over here, this, uh, this I think this is a DS. Yes, that's one of their DS. Beautiful guitar. And then here it looks like a TDR with a torrified top. All right, Kimberly, thanks. I'll see you later. You're welcome. Take care. My TDM has had this tiny little crack coming off of where the nut, basically the corner of the nut and the finish coming into the neck. There was this little, maybe three quarter of an inch long crack. I brought it just for Mark to see it and he did this whole like amazing voodoo of a little razor and some super glue and then an accelerator. And then he literally, he sanded it down and then took it into the other room, sprayed clear on it, came back with the accelerator and it's completely touched up and fixed. It's amazing. I mean, that that repair would have cost me hundreds of dollars and he did it in just moments. And it was awesome. I mean, it's it's like that guy has built this guitar, which is funny. Um, we were looking up the serial number and uh, this guitar was built here in 2009. So anyway, very cool. I'm glad that I have friends like friends at Huss and Dalton. Uh, check out hussandalton.com. I'll put their info in the description below. If you want just absolutely amazing prestige level acoustic guitars and electric guitars, because their Statesboro is such a cool guitar. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. Go fill the world with music and friendship. See you later.